Hello, I'm Andy, a hobbyist leather worker. Um, I thought I'd talk today about um, polishing hammers. Um, it's an innuendo-filled topic, hence why I'm laughing. My mum's been laughing at the previous take I've just done. But um, it's a topic that I think actually really helps with um, riveting. So um, when you're riveting, uh, say, a saddlery copper rivet, um, you'll use one of these, a peening hammer. So this is one that I inherited from my grandpa, um, which is, it's fantastic, it's old, it's characterful. Um, it's made in England, I think, probably made in Kent, but it's very um, dull. You can see where I've been peening brass rivets on the end there. It's got a bit of discoloration there. And um, any time I'm peening something, especially on uh, natural veg tan leather, this, the marks on this just show up in the leather and it's it looks just pretty rubbish. Um, so today I'm going to polish it and hopefully get rid of that. So um, here's what you need to, to polish a hammer. Um, so I'm going to use uh, a couple of different, obviously you need an hammer, otherwise you're wasting your time. You also need um, a couple of good different grits of sandpaper. So I've got some old 120 grit that I'm trying, that, I, that it's a bit knackered, but it's good for this sort of thing. Um, I've got some 400 grit, I've got some 220 grit. I've got all sorts of different grades scattered around here. And um, for the final thing, I'm also going to use this um, bit of leather. I've put some polishing compound on it before. I use it as a bit of a strop. Um, so I'm going to use that to kind of finish off the hammer. So I'm going to start off with basically just getting the worst of it off with the, the quite coarse grit sandpaper um, and just basically do it in a kind of circular motion. And you can see already, even with just that amount of sandpaper on the coarse, that's the coarsest grid I've got, you can see it's a lot shinier than it was. That's what it kind of looked like before, um, and that's definitely of an improvement already. Okay. So I think we're going to move down a grade now. Um, I mean, you can go as close to a mirror finish as you like, but I like this old hammer being quite characterful, so I'm not actually going to go too far. Um, if it was really bad, if you had a really scuffed up hammer that you wanted to alter, um, you could even use a sort of quite a, a file at this point, but I mean, this isn't, it's not bad enough to warrant that. So uh, what I was doing there was just getting around the um, edges of the hammer. If you're ha hammering something like stitches um, and there's still a sort of edge of... Um, Kind of discoloration there that can still leave a mark on vegetarian leather so i'm just going to make sure i get all that around there so as you can see i'm also starting off with the um coarse grit sandpaper on the um, round side um, the round side for me because i'm riveting is the most important thing um so you don't want to forget the round bit, that's where the fun happens. So actually, even just um, even by feel, the difference as I'm doing this is, is sort of noticeable. You can really tell that it's uh, it's making a difference to how the, how a rivet's going to come out. For example, a smoother surface is surely going to create a better rivet, you would think. So um, I think it, you can really tell the difference even with, you know, about five, ten minutes work on this. So I've just um, switched a piece of sandpaper here because um, this one's the grain's basically worn off it. Um, I wouldn't recommend using your favourite piece of sandpaper. I mean, most people probably don't have a favourite piece of sandpaper. I do, so I wouldn't recommend using um, your favourite one because, in all likelihood, you'll na you'll you'll ruin it. So um, get a piece you don't care about. Nobody else is attached to their sandpaper, are they? I'm just going to stop talking. So um, there we are. So I've spent about ten minutes, five ten minutes. Um, to going around with a, this the 120 grit sandpaper um, so you can tell the difference already it's uh, far shinier and I actually quite like this kind of contrast between the shiny used part and these and the old part um, I doubt actually this has ever been done before to these hammers because my grandpa what I, I doubt would have done a huge amount of riveting um, being a farmer so um, yeah I think this is really great and actually this brings brings me to kind of another reason why I think you should do something like this because a new hammer arguably would perform better than this old thing especially before this had been done because um, it's got a nice smooth surface with nice you know a good good mirror polish on it but you know I like using this old stuff this is it's what it was meant for it's not wasn't it was never made to sit in a drawer and look pretty so I think by restoring it to something that's 
still got the nice old character where it doesn't need, you know, where it's not in full use. So here, here, I'm never going to hit something with the side of this hammer. So that's, so it makes perfect sense that I should leave this like this, but keep the bit that I'm actually using in a kind of a, as good a condition as I can. Because then I'll pick this hammer up instead of picking up one that's that's new and, and uh, yeah, hasn't seen as much life as this thing. So there we are, that's what it looks like after about 200 quid. Um, as you can see, it's starting to get a bit more reflective, um, reflecting off the window here. Um, so I'm just going to match that on the other side now. Oh, out of interest, by the way, um, if you're wondering what this horrible wound is on my finger, um, it turns out if you hit yourself with one of these like that, it really hurts. So um, top kit, tip, kids, don't do that. So you may be, able to, may be able to see here that it's actually got a bit less shiny, I think, but it's got more kind of um, smooth looking and it feels really good. You know, if I was to rip it with that now, it would do a very good job, I would think. Um, and the same, same on the other side. But if I was hammering a rivet flat, that is what I want to use. Um, so I'm now going to move on to my strop. So um, for that, it, this is just the only thing that makes mine a strop is that I have written strop on it. Um, it's a piece of old leather. It was part of a journal cover. You can see the stitching line on the edge here. Um, but you know, it's it's not anything fancy. I'm a poor student. So for um, this step, you'll need some jeweler's rouge. So just put a bit on the on your strop there. Otherwise known as polishing compound, um, because surprise after surprise, you use it for polishing. So give that a bit of a polish on the face first. You can see with a bit of work there, um, that's just a, only a few passes really on the strop. Um, the difference you can see is just, it's very different, you know, the shine on that compared to the 1200 grit sandpaper. I'll just try and glint it into the light for you. So that's shiny-ish, that's very shiny. So that's getting pretty close to that high shine mirror finish that you see on a new hammer. And this thing is probably a hundred years old. Bit of scrap veg tan, that's uh, all you need for this. Doesn't have to be labeled strop as carefully as mine is. Right, so I think I've done with this. So um, as you can tell, both sides now are mirror polished. And um, actually, I'm going to do a bit of a demonstration in a second. I'm going to use this um, piece of scrap veg tan here to show you what could happen if you were riveting this on a belt or key ring, say, and the sort of marks you'd get using this hammer versus this one, which is comically large, I know. Um, it's, you know, it's compensating a bit, but you know, this is a really grubby hammer and not a million miles away from what it looked like before. And I'll show you the sorts of marks you can get from using this for riveting. That's the sort of effect you'd get if you set it with a grubby hammer. Um, obviously the rivet's not very well set because you can, well, it's, it, it's only on a scrap bit of edge tan, so it doesn't matter, but you can see on the rivet itself, if I move it slightly further away, you're gonna focus, there we are. The rivet itself is, is not very shiny. It's got a kind of pop mark look, look to it. Um, it's pretty grubby and the veg tan around it is pretty, it's pretty scarred. If that was a belt you were buying, you'd be pretty unhappy with, the, with that sort of finish, I think. Whereas I'm going to set this, uh, this other rivet here with the clean polished hammer and we'll see what the difference is there. So you can see the difference here. This is far shinier than the other one. I've gone around the edge as much as I can just to show you what the sort of marking you can get, get with it is. Sorry, it's, uh, you see there is a little bit of marking around the edge here, but that's not nearly as bad and the rivet generally is a far nicer finish. The shine on that compared to the shine on that is very, very different. 
and um, yeah, I think that re that's a pretty good reason to do it. I've gone around the edges to say as much as I can to really maximise the marking, but there's a, there's a lot less of it. And um, to be honest, this piece of leather was was dirty to start with, but that looks pretty rubbish around there. So now you'll be able to go to your friends at the pub and say, you know, have a hammer shining contest. Say mine's the shiniest hammer of all, and you'll be able to prove it. Now that you've done this, um, I mean, you'd probably get kicked out of the pub and your life would go just downhill in a big spiral after that. But, you know, that's a you problem. Bye.